too late in the day for this. I'm making up duck a l'orange today. This is from Julia Child. It's a roast duck with orange sauce. I'm cooking with duck today, so you better hold on to something. Oh! <laughs> Bon appetit. Volume one today, Mastering the Art of French Cooking from JC. And I've worked up the courage today to tackle duck. I've avoided this part of the book long enough. Yeah, I've never cooked with duck before. I've had it before, loved it. But yeah, I've heard of this recipe. It's roast duck with orange sauce. Canaton à l'orange. And uh, canaton is a, is a duckling. I'm not cooking with the duckling today, thank God. I'm cooking with a duck, so a canard. Canard à l'orange. One of the most well-known of all duck dishes. A roast duck decorated with fresh orange segments and accompanied by an orange-flavored brown sauce. Yeah, I like read over this part of the book a dozen times just to wrap my head around it, because this is all new to me and kind of a learning curve here. But uh, the best way for me to learn is by doing. So I'm just gonna do what I always do. Jump out of the plane without a parachute, head first, and hope for the best. Let's get started. Here is my duck. This is a big boy. Whenever I have to order something that's like harder to find, like a duck or a duckling, I look online and there's like a whole bunch of delivery services around here in New York, and it gets delivered right to my door. So that's easy, because I don't want to go to like butcher shop, butcher shop looking for a four and a half pound duck slash duckling. Anyway, I ordered exactly what it says in the book. I even went under. I was like, you know what? I want a four pound duck. That's good for me. And uh, what came to my door was this, which is six and a half pounds. Of course, I have to do a good job because this thing costs an arm and a leg. And secondly, I mean, it's a duck. He didn't want to be here. It smells like a dead duck. At least it doesn't have the head on. Believe me, it's fresh, but it smells, it smells. I have to make a duck stock to start. So I gotta remove the lower wings. Oh, there's no diagrams on how to do this, so I have to figure it out on my own. Thank God for Google. Oh, Jesus, I figured out how to get the neck out. It's just pull it out. There's some extra fat there. There's the part of the neck too. What is this? The neck, some extra duck fat. Oh, here's the giblets in the bag. Got it. I'll see you in a moment. Oy! <sighs> Moving on. What is this, the heart or the liver? What is it? That looks like the liver. All these duck parts into one and a half inch pieces. What's next? Going deep. All right, so I'm gonna just roughly chop up an onion. I'm gonna roughly cut up a couple carrots here. My big ass saucepan, tablespoon of pork fat. Get that going on like a medium heat. The duck stuff and my vegetables. This all needs to be browned. So I gotta pour out all the browning fat and back on the heat. One and a half cups of beef stock, like a brown stock. A couple parsley sprigs. She says one third of a bay leaf. I'm doing a whole bay leaf. And thyme. And enough water to cover the duck by half an inch. Got to keep this simmering for an hour and a half, partially covered, and I got to be skimming it throughout. While I was waiting, I was looking online for the easiest way to skim the fat, and I have a bunch of ice cubes in a metal spoon here, kind of just dipping the bottom of the spoon into the liquid, and it kind of like takes all the fat with it. Okay, great news, the stock is finished. Strain it very haphazardly. I'm an idiot. Strain the stock. Okay, don't need that. I'm gonna pour a bunch in here. So I need to let this stock just hang out because it's really fatty. I couldn't skim it all. I'm gonna let the fat rise to the surface and then I'll skim it that way. Four brightly colored, eight. Brightly colored navel oranges. Remove the orange part of the skin in strips with a vegetable peeler. Needs to be, what, one and a half inches long. Cut into julienne strips. Gotcha. Stack a bunch of the good ones. Maybe go a bit thinner. Okay, there we go. My julienne orange skin strips. 
Skin strips is not a good choice of word. Any saucepan is around four cups, a liter of water. Add the orange skin strips. Stop it. Simmer for 15. Drain it and then pat it dry. Okay, there we go. Half a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of pepper. And I gotta season the cavity of this, this quacker. Okay, here we go. Move it all about. And then I need to wash my hands. Add a third of the prepared orange peel as well. There was many, many days before the expiration date of that duck but it just like, it has like an odor to it. It's not like, it doesn't smell rotten or anything. It's just, it's intense. So I got a needle and connected to all the string here. I followed along exactly to this recently with that roast squab that I did, which it, difficult to even sum up what I'm trying. This bird is like. I feel like an animal right now. It was, I mean, the trussing was great. So first I got to thrust the needle through the lower part of the carcass. Come back over the drumstick and through the tip of the breastbone. And then over the second drumstick. Okay, I need plenty of slack to make this work. Come on, and tie. You know what, I should probably go around this one a few times maybe. Yeah, then through, and then around this one. Make it tight. Turn the page with your clean hand. Push the needle through the carcass where the second joint and drumstick join. Push it through the corresponding side. There we go. Duck on its breast. And then fold the wings akimbo. I believe akimbo is just like hands on the waist and then like wings like kind of backwards a bit. Proper, stand up straight. While you have a clean hand, turn the oven on. Thread the needle through one wing and catch the neck skin against each side. Neck skin, neck skin, got my wing, hands on the waist, and then elbows backwards. That's a Kimbo. Draw the string nice and tight. Cool. Loop it back around to the beginning. Then I'm just gonna tie a knot, lock it in place. Right here on the end part is just a bit too much. I think I'm just gonna snip some of that off. Is there any duck meat there? No. Prick the skin around the thighs and the back and lower breast. There's not much more detail than that, so I'm just gonna take a fork and prick it. On the lower breast, thighs, and the back. So I gotta dry, Ugh. double plies. Dry the duck thoroughly. Keep those hands a washing. So I got a roasting pan. Duck into the pan. This pan needs to be just large enough to hold the duck easily. That's like a match made in heaven. However, I need a couple things. First, a couple carrots that I'm just gonna slice and a whole onion. All around my ducky, I am picking up on something here. Not a lot of butter. Where's the butter? And strangely enough, you don't roast the duck in butter. There's no butter. There's no mention of butter. My mind's gonna explode. Maybe it's just fatty enough that you don't need the butter. So I wanna cook this duck to medium rare. As she says, overcooked duck meat is brown, dry, and disappointing. French taste is for ducks roasted to a medium rare. In the book, there's this chart, or this timetable of how to roast a duck based on the, the weight of it. My duck was initially six and a half pounds, but I did remove parts of it, so maybe six, pounds now, six pounds now. I don't really want to take it out and weigh it. Important to weigh the duck. So, oh, okay. So now it's five and a half pounds. A five and a half pound duck takes an hour and 25 to 30 minutes for a medium rare. So I need to initially brown this thing lightly at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So into the middle of the oven it goes. This is just a start. Okay, so I gotta reduce the heat to 350 and then turn the duck on its side. How do you do that? How's that gonna work? She says turn it on its side. So it's on its side. So the thing is I gotta regulate the heat and the duck's always gotta be making cooking noises. So you can, if you can hear that, it is. Although I'm not really doing a good job regulating the heat if it's wide open. So I'm gonna skim the fat occasionally. I don't need to baste it. 30 minutes it's gonna be on that one side and then I will flip it onto the other side. 
So while that duck is in the oven, there is plenty more to do. Firstly, I'm gonna skim this stock. Fat has risen right to the top. That is what I wanted. That's all fat. Cut the oranges into neat skinless segments. I don't really know what she means by skinless segments. Does she just mean like, you know, taking apart an orange and... I don't know if that's what she means, but that's what I'm going with. Place these in a Tupperware till you need them. This is all mine. So Julia really stresses the importance of this orange sauce. Rich, strong, meaty, duck essence, darkened with caramel, flavored with wine, and orange peel. Oh, and given a light liaison of arrowroot, which I don't even have arrowroot. I'm using cornstarch, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference anyway. So let me first portion out my duck stock. I have half a cup here, full cup there, two tablespoons, 28 grams of cornstarch. In the book, there's a choice between Madeira wine and port wine. I have them both, so it's hard to choose. Since port comes up in the book first, port it is. And I need two tablespoons of that. This dumbass miniature whisk. Okay, that's mixed. In my saucepan, three tablespoons of sugar, a quarter cup, 50 milliliters of red wine vinegar. And I gotta boil this. High heat, please. Okay, so vinegar. Holy sh So on high heat until it has turned into a mahogany brown syrup. Her words, not mine. It's almost there, I gotta, oh, I gotta do something with the duck. Um, okay, let that pause for a second. I gotta rotate the duck. <laughs> okay, duck onto the other side. I don't think it's gonna keep up, no. How do you keep that up? Stay put, duck. And lean it on that for another half an hour. So let's return to the mahogany brown syrup. Looking for them mahogany. Where is the mahogany? Give me the mahogany. Okay, we are transforming from purple into a mahogany. I repeat, into a mahogany. Immediately turn it off the heat. Off the heat. I need a half cup of my duck stock. Simmer for a moment to dissolve the caramel. Now I have to add in a full cup of duck stock, as well as this cornstarch port wine mix. And honestly, it might be time to get a proper whisk. So I gotta beat that in. So no cornstarch clumps allowed. Oh, I need one more thing. The rest of the orange peel. Okay, so I simmer for three to four minutes until the sauce is clear. Limpid, limpid. Simmer for three to four minutes until the sauce is clear. Limpid, which is a word I've never heard of before, and lightly thickened. Oh, it's lightly thickened. It is, uh, it's not clear at all, nor is it limpid. I don't know what limpid means. What does limpid mean? A marine mollusk with a shallow conical shell and a broad muscular foot found clinging tightly to rocks. What the fuck? Maybe it's a British term. I have a British version of this cookbook. Free of anything that darkens, completely clear. How the hell is that gonna happen? There's no way that's supposed to be completely clear. Simmer for three to four minutes until the sauce is clear, limpid, which is a stupid word, and lightly thickened. I don't know what else I could do here. It's not gonna be clear. If you ask me, I think this is a good looking sauce. I don't know, it tastes pretty good to me. I could use a little salt, quite honestly, but besides that, that's as limpid as it's gonna get. Leave that aside. So this is after an hour and 15 minutes in the oven. Let's take a look. I mean, clearly that is just an insane amount of fat. I'm gonna just take some of that out. Look at all this fat. This has to go breast facing up. Back in it goes for 15 minutes. This is how much duck fat I just removed from the dish. And there's still more in there. Strain this and keep it for a rainy day. Remember this sentence here? Overcooked duck meat is brown, dry, and disappointing. So now, for the next few minutes, my goal here is not to make this brown dry and disappointing. I want a medium rare duck. So I was just looking online because she doesn't really say it in here, I don't think. Uh, but a medium rare is 135 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have my eye on the prize right now. 
and I'm at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't isn't well done, but it's oh, for f sakes. I thought I looked at everything in this f book. She doesn't have temperatures. Why don't you have temperatures in your book? I just f anti chefed it. I cooked this thing for an hour and 15 minutes. The book said an hour and 25 to an hour and a half. So I probably should have checked the temperature around 10 minutes or 15 minutes before I started checking the temperature because this baby is cooked. Here's the thing, here's the kicker. If I press down on this, the juices have a slight rosiness to them, which is exactly what she describes in the book as being medium rare. I don't know what to follow. The book with how it's describing what medium rare looks like with the slightly rosiness, of the juices? <laughs> or is it the internal temperature, which is what I found online, but she never mentions internal temperatures in the book, which is at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So, at the end of the day, I don't know what to believe. To cut the string off. See, my theory is because there's so much duck fat in this pan, I wonder if this duck cooked quicker. Yeah, this is really hot. But I wonder if this duck cooked quicker because it was sitting in all this duck fat because there's just so much fat that came out of this bad boy. I mean, I was removing it as evidence here, but I mean, it's just a non-stop fat machine. It's a theory. I don't know if it's true or not. It's just a theory. I'm gonna place the duck on my pizza tray. <laughs> and then I'm gonna leave this in a turned off oven with the door ajar. Oh my God, I almost spilt it at the door ajar. Remove as much fat as you can from the roasting tin. Yeah, I can remove all of it if you want me to. Add this to the heat up high. Let's get that toasty. And I need half a cup of Madeira. This is Madeira wine this time. Madeira wins in the end. Half a cup. Madeira wine goes in. Okay, time to deglaze. So I gotta scrape up the fawn, the, the coagulated stuff. Reduce it down until I have around two tablespoons worth. That's good. Now I'm gonna bring over this other sauce. Remember the one that has the mahogany? The limpid mahogany, I'm gonna turn it to a simmer just because it's kind of looking a little jelly-like. A strainer, the cooking juices into the sauce. So next up, I need to use a good orange liqueur. I'm gonna obviously use my Cointreau and I need two to three tablespoons. So I'll use two and a half. So the sauce needs a pleasant orange flavor, but not too sweet. A course corrector here is just a little pinch of like lemon juice. Once that's to a simmer, I just turn off the heat. And um, what else do I have to do? Bring on the duck. You know, at this point, I think I'm just gonna put it on this cutting board. I have my bone knife and I have my nice knife. There's a way to carve this bird. She says that the French method of carving is to make as many thin slices of breast meat as possible, four to six per side. So she says, he it's too late in the day for this. Um, as follows, after the second joints and drumsticks have been removed, the duck is turned on its side. Second joints? What is a second? drumsticks. So all I'm doing initially to start here is just quartering this thing. So separating the whites from the dark meat. I'm too confused right now. It's too late in the day, my friends, to learn a new trick. Slicing the white meat up and then I'm gonna keep the dark legs like whole. I'm kind of interpreting this through the book and what I saw on the internet. Just before serving, I'm gonna add an ounce of butter into my orange sauce. That's gonna enrich the sauce. Unfortunately uh, for me, the sauce is kind of clumped up a little bit just cause it was hanging out and it was just kind of congealed up and kind of got a bit cornstarch clumpy, which is something I hate. So now I gotta think outside the box and I don't know if this is gonna work, if I'm gonna keep this in the video. I don't know yet. Let me just pass this sauce through a sieve to get rid of some of these clumps. 
It's very thick, it's like a gravy almost. Of course, those orange peels are in there. I'm gonna have to remove those. So I've rinsed off the orange peels. I just gotta pat them dry. And now, magically, they're exactly how they were before I added them to the sauce, initially. And now, I'm just gonna add them to the sauce. No big deal. Don't tell anyone. Now I have to try to fix this. I'm just gonna bring it to a simmer and then add more duck stock. A little bit more Cointreau salt, the lemon juice. Yeah, that's exactly where it was. I'm gonna add my white meat first and get the dark meat. Then, of course, the orange. I don't know, I'm thinking like that. So I have a couple of those orange peel slices on top as the finishing touch. Order up! So as she says here, overcooked duck meat is brown, dry, and disappointing. And I think truer words have never been spoken because that's how I'm feeling right now. It's just kind of disappointed and I don't really know how to um, review this dish without, you know, going into all these different factors that are running through my head right now, which is like, you know, accidentally ordering the, the wrong size of a duck. And then when I opened the bag, I was kind of thrown off by the smell of a duck. And then it's just like, um, you know, the price has to be a factor, super expensive. Then I had to make the stock and then it was like a lot of build up to me inevitably, eventually, overcooking this duck. Let's not forget about the important element here, the sauce, which was supposed to be rich, strong, meaty duck essence darkened with caramel, flavored with wine and orange peel. And I think I got, you know, fairly close to all that, but I just, I can't get it out of my head that it just more resembled like a gravy to me. And I don't think that was the objective. So I think it's just, I don't really understand this dish. I think I'd have to go to an actual restaurant and have it served to me by like a pro or something. And then I, and then I could see what I'm looking at here. Because right here, right now, I don't know. That was Julia Child's Duck à l'Orange. And at the end of the day, I wish, I wish she made it for me instead. You know, you just gotta brush it off. You brush it off. These cooks happen. Be nice in the comments, please. This is Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. On my Patreon this week, I have a whole collection of things building. Q&A videos, behind the scenes, live streams. If you wanna join me for that, you gotta sign up for my Patreon. It should be linked right here or in the description.